Hello, hello, hello. What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Ron, a.k.a. Ron the Artist, coming to you live. And welcome to Ron's Recap. I'm here today to recap and review the TV show RuPaul's Drag Race on VH1, season 14, episode 13, titled The Ross Matthews Roast. The Ross Matthews Roast. Let's get into it. Let's get into it, guys. Let's get into it. Okay, so the episode was good. The episode was good. It was good. It was good. You know, well, it wasn't super good like maybe the last two episodes were, but it was okay. I will give it that. It was okay. It was okay. Okay, so the episode started with the girls being a little bitter. The Basco, the Bosco had the immunity golden chocolate bar. I don't know why they knew it was still out there. Somebody had it. I guess maybe they're just bitter and mad that it wasn't them. I don't know. But she's here. And at that moment, I was thinking like, all right, it's time to get back to work, girls. Get back to it. Get back to it. Get back to it. It's time. You all live to slay another day for now. You all live to slay, slay another day for now. So let's get back to it. Next up was the maxi challenge. The remaining contestants had to paint RuPaul and Dolly Parton's face on a huge poster on a wall. Almost like a billboard-like, something that was to go on a billboard or, you know, something to go on a building. A mural to go on a building. But, yeah, so the contestants had to paint, they had to paint RuPaul's face or Dolly Parton's face on a huge poster. Meanwhile, being paired into groups, into two groups. The group that painted RuPaul's face was Deja, Georges, and Juria. And the group that painted Dolly's face was Bosco, Lady Camden, and Willow, Willow, Willow and Daya Betty. <clears throat> team Daya and up, I said Team Daya. Well, technically it was her team, but Team Dolly won the challenge. Team Dolly Parton, the, the people that had the face, the group that had Dolly Parton's face, they ended up winning the challenge. Each winning $1,500. Each other, and they also had the chance to pick the order of the main challenge, the Ross Matthews Roast Challenge. And that was an interesting choice. But they were fair about it. 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 And I like that. You know, they could have been strategic about it, but they were fair about it. So they end up choosing first Bosco to go in the order of the challenge. First was Bosco. She wanted to redeem herself. She felt like she needed major redemption from last week from almost being eliminated. So Bosco was up first. Georges was up second. Willow was third. And Jiria was fourth. Fifth was Diabetti. Sixth was Deja Sky. And last, Lady Camden. She also feels like she got something to prove. And... I'm here for it. I'm here for it. I'm here for it. <clears throat> Again, Bosco chose herself to go first, feeling like she had a lot to prove and almost going home last week. And she got fire under her butt. So she was like, okay, uh, it's it's all or go home. You know, like go home or go hard. Like she's in it. She's in it to win it at this point, which she's always been in it to win it. But last week she was almost out this bad boy in <laughs> the drag god saved her. <laughs> In the words of Drew Paul, when the words of Drew Paul, the drag god saved her. So about this, you know, this roast, most of the girls are a little on edge. And at that moment, I'm just thinking like, all I know is these girls better not bomb the freaking roast challenge like they did Snatch Game. Still disappointed about that. Still disappointed. Still disappointed. The struggle was real. Starting with George's. The struggle was real, starting with Georges. Georges was all over the place from beginning, just practicing and preparing just in her head. And she was defeated before she did the challenge. And it kind of showed during the challenge. Sidebar, it appeared that Lady Camden was ready to kill that challenge. She, at that moment, I'm like, she is ready to kill this, ch this challenge. And honestly, I'm here for it. I'm glad that she's I'm glad that Lady Camden is showing up and showing out at this point of the competition because if you remember me saying at the beginning of the competition, I was telling Lady Camden to step her cookies up. Like 
I'm like, you know, she was a little bitter about, you know, not really placing in the top three at first. And I'm going to say probably those were like the, the first three, four episodes outside of the premiere, the first two premieres. And I'm just like, girl, Lady Camden, like, if you want to get to that point, step your cookies up. And at that moment, I felt like Lady Camden, her presence was lacking. I remember her at that moment. I remembered her English presence because she was the first English to grace this stage, the the U.S. version of Drag Race. But her presence was lacking. I wasn't seeing many conf many confessionals from her, and she was a little shy, I guess. And RuPaul or somebody, you know, on the judging panel critiqued her and told her, like, you need to put yourself more out there. And she damn sure did that. So I'm like, I'm happy she's stepping it up because now she has a presence. And honestly, I, I would like to see her get to this top four. I would like to see her get to the top four. Lady Camden, she would, again, she's the first of her kind to grace the English, to, to grace the, U, ooh, the U.S. version of Drag Race. And that would be her story. I'm just saying. So next up, you know, RuPaul, you know, oh, it, it got to the point where RuPaul came out on the main stage. RuPaul has been giving it this season with the, the fashions and the runway, like, baby. She walked out in this gold, like, outfit and this poofy white afro giving God this. Like, yes, 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 yes. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Like George's. <laughs> RuPaul is giving it, though. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. RuPaul is giving it this season, and I'm here for it. So on to the roast. Bosco, of course, went first. She killed it. I actually laughed at her last joke. With those roasts, a lot of times I don't personally laugh, but I actually laughed at her last joke. Like, like laugh laugh and wasn't like a <laughs> I was like oh that was actually funny like I actually laughed at her last joke it was it was cute Georgia's been second good energy but she rode the struggle bus she she rode the struggle bus with it she really did good energy like she was trying her best to like play it off and string it along but it really did not stay afloat third Willow Great energy, good energy, no I wrote good energy. Although the jokes could have went a little harder. For me, I didn't laugh, but she had a presence and she made the judges laugh. Fourth, Nigeria. Great energy, not that funny, but it was super believable. It was like none of her jokes really landed, but she was shading and you couldn't tell her that her jokes was didn't land. And she made it believable and she stayed afloat. She didn't think. Like George's, for example. Next up, Diabetti. Again, good energy, but none of the jokes landed. <laughs> none of her jokes landed. Like, again, another person with good energy, but none of the jokes landed. And hers kind of bombed. Like, her and Angeria were kind of similar, but Angeria, at least, again, it was believable. It was made to seem funny, even though they weren't. Diabetes just was long <clears throat> and not that funny and just didn't quite hit at all. But it wasn't super bad, but it was not good. You know, but good energy, good energy, good energy. Deja Sky, not funny. The judges ate her up because they were like, you did not take any of our critiques on what to start with and how to land it and dot, 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 dot. And it wasn't funny. But the jokes of hers that, you know, the, the jokes of hers that she gave, none of them landed until the ending. That wasn't really a joke. It was like, you know, she didn't introduce the next girl. She kind of walked off and it made the judges laugh. And everything else bombed. Lastly, Lady Camden. She killed it. I knew she would. Great energy. All her jokes landed. And she was actually funny, too. She was actually funny. And I was here for it. I was here for it. I was here for Lady Camden. Lady Camden did the damn thing. Like, Lady Camden came in that challenge confident. Like, okay. If I can't start it, I'm going to end it, and I'm going to take the house down, bring it down with me. And again, mind you, again, she has this presence as the only English person on this U.S. version. She has an accent off rip. So again, she stands out. She stands out. She hasn't really done that yet, have kind of played to her English reference. I would like to see something maybe in the top four. 
if you're watching this, Lady Camden, note, I would like to see maybe an English reference of the sort. You know, United Kingdom. We haven't seen that from her yet, even though I like what she's been giving these last handful of weeks. But I haven't seen an English reference. It would have been nice if she kind of gave a little, poked a little fun at her English accent, you know, her English, you know, presence in that roast. But she stands out off rip because she's English and the fact that she's able to still be funny and still, you know, not to let, not like let that get in the way of her beating the actual U.S. girls. I love that. Again, that's a plus. She's different. Being different is always a plus. A lot of people play downplay it like it's you're different, ill, no, get away. Being different is always a plus and good. And I don't care who says otherwise. Okay, <laughs> on to the runaways. Too, too much. At first, I didn't quite grasp that that title. I'm thinking, you know, too, too much like of the look. But it was actually a tutu, like a ballerina tutu. But it still could have meant tutu if you ask me. Like too, too much fabric. Like I was like, okay, this should be Deja Sky's challenge. Because she's she's she she's been giving a lot of heavy fabric. Giving a little too much a lot of weeks. <clears throat> but on to the front ways. Bosco. You know, I love her bloody ballerina look. Finally, a little different from the two, three pieces that she be wearing. It still was kind of somewhat there, but it was different. She she added some stuff to it, and she gave her a little bloody ballerina look with white and red all around her, and it worked, it worked, it worked. Bosco did not come to play this week, and I am here for it. It's another person, if you're wondering, who I would like to see in the top four. George's basic with a tutu and a leather jacket. Like, it was a, like a... Purple, like, lavender, like, tutu with a leather jacket, like a biker hat and a leather, a biker leather jacket, and it didn't hit. She had on heels, like, um, boots, too. It didn't hit for me. It was very basic. Willow. Next up, Willow. She understood the assignment. Lots of black fabric selling a ball like a tire with a slight scary twist to it. It gave a queen, kind of like, I'm... I like to see from <clears throat> Lady Camden, like a queen, like the queen of the English, like almost black, silver, and pink. The pink boots and the pink gloves she had on with that black dress and the silver lining that was on that dress and the, the red lipstick. The red, I, She could have done without the doggone face that she made. <clears throat> but I, I get it's comical. It works for her drag and it was cute. But the look was 10 out of 10. I love when they stray away from the pack what that looks like and do it do it like the pink with the pink boots those pink like leather boots or pink like plastic fabric or whatever with the gloves to match that really 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 worked and looked good with that black and silver dress really good okay so on to injuria 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 she wore a lime green slash yellow dress more like you know that green highlighter color like you know, it was a tutu, tutu all the way down the dress, like layer tutu, 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 tutu. You know, and it was cute. It was cute. It was cute. <clears throat> I liked it. I liked it. Diabetti, super tall ballerina. She playing. She was playing that to her advantage, being super tall, height with nine, ten inch heels, and it was decent. You know, her look was not bad. Her look wasn't bad at all. Wasn't super memorable, but I do remember those doggone heels and that heighted her up to be even taller than what she already is, being the tallest queen there. So, yeah, kudos to her for that. <clears throat> Deja Sky. She gave a, pl a pastel blue slash purple, like periwinkle like color, tutu like dress. It was cute. It was cute. It was cute. Could have went a lot harder though, but it was cute. And especially at the top area here. It was very loose, like, and not so cinched and fine. <clears throat> Lastly, Lady Camden. Very ballerina-like, as she is in real life, as we know. She did it in heels. And sparkly as hell, too. She did it in heels and pink, sparkly, and just beautiful. She was beautiful. And, and like, you would think maybe she would have tried point something like that, like Brooklyn Heights, but she didn't, and it still worked, and she still sold it. She still sold it, and I liked it. I liked it. I liked it. I liked it. I was here for it. Ultimately, 
Bosco will end up winning this week's challenge. Congrats to Bosco. Congrats to Bosco. Congrats to my girl Bosco. You know, well-deserving and a great comeback from last week. Meanwhile, Lady Camden, Willow, and Nigeria were safe, leaving Georges, Diabetti, and Deja Sky in the bottom three. Not only that, all three of them had to lip sync, and it was to be a double chante, meaning two of the girls were to go home in that three-way lip sync. Pressure, 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 pressure. The lip syncing song was Good For You by Olivia Rodrigo. And if you ask me, the song was super edgy and made for Diabetes drag style. <clears throat> the song has a kind of a, like a rock like beat and kind of a, it'll make you do that to the song. I love that song, actually. I don't love it, love it, love it, but I like it a lot. And Diabetes. She could have did a little better with the song, honestly, but maybe I'm blaming that on the heels that she was in, but she gave what she needed to give. She gave what was supposed to be gave, and kudos to her for that, because she ended up winning the lip sync, sending Georgia and Deja home. Although, Georgia put up a good fight in that lip sync. Cannot take, for her, take from her. I cannot take from Georgia. Georgia did what she had to do in the lip sync as well. It's just that Diabetti had more presence, definitely more presence in that lip sync. And honestly, it was time for Georges and De Deja to go home, and I wasn't mad about the double chante. We need to get to the end of this competition at some point soon. So it was a double chante, leaving five contestants left. So that means after next week, we are going to get to the top four. Unless they have like a little extra episode in there. Another extra episode, but hopefully not, you know, so... I can't wait to see who's going to make the top four. And, you know, I got to say that I'm surprised and impressed by Diabetti. She's made it to the top five from originally being eliminated, you know, first in her premiere episode. She was eliminated first in her premiere episode and had the opportunity to come back. And the girl has been doing her thing since she's been back. You know, I can't stand her due to her attitude in very bitchy ways. But the girl has been showing up. She's been showing up and she's been doing her thing. That was that, that you know, that spark she needed. That was that spark she needed to come back. And like, like Diabetti, no, Deja Sky, I'm sorry. Like Deja Sky said in the lip sync, I mean, in the um confessional and Untucked that, well, it wasn't the confessional, but Deja Sky said in Untucked that she was the one to send Diabetti home in that first episode, the premiere episode. Coincidentally, now those tables have turned where Diabetti sent Deja Sky home. Interesting. Interesting. I like it. I like it. I like it. So on to the Untucked. You know, Untucked was, yeah, kind of boring a little bit. Willow got the family video, though. She got the family video this week, and it was super sweet. Support I know she needed, you know. Willow's pretty much here by herself, doing her thing by herself, and she needed the support. So that's what it was. And ultimately, you know, got to Georges and Deja, you know, going home. You know, I'm glad they used each other as support as they left together. After all, they'll always share that double chante moment with each other. And it was cute and nice and welcoming and uplifting for each other, you know, with one another. And I can't wait to see what they do in the future. They'll always share that moment together, and I can't wait to see what they'll do in the future. Georges, Georges got a little bit more room to grow. I really had such high hopes for Georges at the beginning of the season. Actually, to be honest, she was one of my favorites that I liked it at the beginning of the season. But it, 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 mm -mm, I say probably the first two or three episodes. I, after like the first two or three episodes, I was uninterested and was not given what needed to be gave. And I'm like, girl, you have such a a presence, small little thing, but. So such confidence and can dance her butt off. But her presence lacked. Her presence lacked, you know, maybe again it was the confidence, but I wish her well. Now, on to Deja Sky, she went much further than I thought she would have gone. Honestly, I thought she probably, I should have been, she should have been gone like episode two or three. For real, for real. Like, I feel like honestly, Alyssa Hunter should have went way longer. And Deja Scott should have been gone a, long, a lot longer. But I will give it to Deja Scott because 
She's made it this far. In these last handful of episodes, she's been given what needed to be gave. She's been, you know, getting by. And I will applaud her for that. So I can't wait to see what Deja Sky does in the future. I'd like to see one of them back for All-Stars. Give George just a little bit more time. Give George just a little bit more time. So I would like to see, she's 21 right now. I'd like to see her back on Drag Race maybe when she's 25. And let's see what her drag, her drag is then. As far as Deja Sky, I give her a little moment too. She needs to figure out, I really want her to figure out how to translate her sewing gift into her drag. Because clearly she, she helps translate that with other people's drag. She does all type of dresses and gowns and garments, I'm, I'm sure of, for other drag queens all day, every day. But if you ask me, that didn't translate well with her own drag at all. And especially today's episode where... This area was very loose and not cinched and just, even RuPaul said that was an easy fix. So, I don't know, like, Jay just got was a little messy this season. Like, not messy like drama-like, but, like, her drag was a little messy. It could have been way more cleaner and way more just cinched. It could have been way more cleaner and cinched, like, girl... She didn't really show, I did not see an episode where I felt like, ooh, well, let me not lie. There was one episode, again, her for her entry episode where I love that dress she, that black and blue dress she had on with the like flower, floral print on it. Like, I really love that. And I feel like that showed some of her skills there. But everything else, it was heavy on the fabric. Like she was like hiding a little bit behind whatever but i would like to see what she can really do with the sewing we know you have it we i've even heard laganza estranja talk about it and what what was that she talked about that in the pit stop we know you have it so i'd like to see that in the future but she needs to figure that out first she needs to figure that out first how to translate that that skill into her drag because it, it can be done, I'm sure. She just got to figure it out. She was able to translate it to other people's drag, I'm sure. So, why can't she do it for her own? So, that's all I got for you guys. That's all I got for you guys. To end that up, just, they just got, I wish you the best. And Georgia, I, Georgia's, I wish you the best as well. That's all I got for you guys this week, guys. It's your boy, Ron, a.k.a. Ron the Artist. If you're watching this with me right now, we're live on Instagram. If you're watching this on YouTube, this is not live. This is pre-recorded and taken from Instagram Live. If you're watching this on YouTube, please like, subscribe, share, comment, all the above. Let's talk about the review. Let's talk about the recap. Let's talk about the episode. If you're watching this on Instagram, let's talk about the episode. Follow me. Like, share, comment. My links to my, all of my social medias can be found in the description of all of my videos and even on my profile as well. Let's chat. Let's talk. Follow me, guys. Subscribe to my channel. Keep in touch. Stay tuned for the next review. Until it is next week, guys. Peace.